Hi, this is Mr. Schreiber, and I want to welcome you to the first video podcast for economics. In this first video, we're going to go over some basic economic terms and concepts that you're going to need to know to start understanding what economics is all about. Please take some good notes, um, and feel free to ask questions when we get back together in class. Um, and I may ask you some questions to make sure you understood what you saw in this video. So, let's begin. Um, obviously, we're going to be discussing economics, and the first question, or I guess thing we need to talk about is, what are we studying? What is economics really all about? And if you ask the average person on the street this question, I think the answer you're going to get would be simply, it's about money. It's about making money, investing money, um, anything having to do with money. And I guess my response is that that is true only up to a point. Um, it is a key component, of course, to economics, but it's not the end-all, be-all of what this course is about. It has its place, and it is important, but economics is about much more than just about money. Uh, money is a means to an end, um, a vehicle, if you will, which we will uh, talk about in, in class in many different ways. So, the answer to what economics is really about is the following. It's really an investigation into how everyone, you and I, businesses, both big and small, and entire nations deal with this issue of scarcity. Okay, And scarcity is really the same thing as what we call the economic dilemma. Okay, um, But the definition of scarcity is that in our society, for each of us, there are not enough goods or services to meet the desires or the wants of everyone. And simply enough, there's not enough of everything, of anything for everyone. Um, and when you talk about scarcity, you really have two key components or parts, if you will. You have unlimited wants and you have limited resources. And you need to understand both of these key components because that's really what we'll be discussing in just a variety of ways throughout this course. So let's start with unlimited wants. Unlimited wants um, is simply the desire, the, the want, of course, for something. Um, we have two basic parts, two different options. We have items. In economics, we call them finished products. This is things that you want to consume, literally like hamburgers, or things you use, obviously, like your cell phone. So a cup of coffee, obviously, an important part of um, lots and lots of people's mornings is a product that most of us can't imagine going without. Um, this is a finished good that you and I consume on a regular basis. A service obviously may not have a physical item that you can see, but it obviously produces an end result that you want. Um, obviously, I'm doing that right now. I'm teaching you about certain concepts, hopefully helping your understanding of economics, which you can use hopefully for the rest of your life. Another example is obviously fixing your car. Most of us, when we need something done to our car, don't do it ourselves anymore, even as simple as oil changes, which actually are not that simple anymore. Um, oil changes can be very complicated, and so we do not have the expertise, nor the skills, nor the tools, nor do we want to spend the time doing that. We'd rather hire someone, but that is a service that we spend money on. Um, one key point I'd like to make here is needs. Um, simple enough, needs are just really strong wants. Obviously, you need food, water, and shelter to survive. Um, but many of you would argue at different times in your life there are other needs or other wants that you would almost define in the same way. But we're not going to really split hairs over the two different concepts. We're just going to say needs, really strong wants. Okay. Um, the other side, of course, to this issue is limited resources. Um, limited resources are simply the raw materials, okay? the, the, the raw stuff that we use to make goods or provide services. Okay. Um, obviously, the most obvious, the, the most obvious examples are the things you find in nature, things you can literally pick up off the ground. Um, that can be simple things such as a tree that you would cut down, um, or a little more complicated would be um, the oil that we pump out of the ground. Obviously, most of us are very familiar that we use oil in our cars in the form of gasoline, but also oil is converted into plastic, which is used to create many, many, many products that you use, and I, even the cell phone that's in your pocket right now. Um, or the computer that you're using right now to look at this video. Um, 
So limited resources are just all the raw essential elements that we find in our world that we use to produce goods and services. And of course, there's a limited amount. We're all very aware, well aware that there's only a finite amount of oil or of any raw material. Um, nothing lasts forever. And so that's, that's the dilemma that we face. So to kind of summarize, on the one hand, we have unlimited wants for many, many goods and services. And yet, those goods and services can only be produced to a certain amount because of the resources which are needed to produce all of the goods and services. So, in summary, economics is really here the study of these two struggling, opposing aspects. Okay, The desire for goods and services being limited by the amount of resources available to produce all those limited sources. So the question is, what do we produce and who gets it? That's basically what economics is all about. Because of this, everyone in, has to make choices. Okay. Choices about how we're going to use our limited resources. We do that on an individual basis. And again, companies do that as well as societies. Um, so to give you a, a very simple but straightforward example, um, for you and I, one of the basic things we must decide is how will we spend our time and our money, okay. of which both are obviously limited to some degree. When we talk about money, let's imagine you have $20 in your pocket. Okay, You can go to lunch, maybe take a friend along and have a relatively decent meal. Okay, Kudova, Chipotle, maybe Panera Bread, Panera Bread, excuse me. Or you can take that $20 and fill up your gas tank. Depending on how large your car is, you may not be able to fill it up, but you'll be able to put a decent amount in. The reality is you cannot do both. You have to choose lunch with a friend or gas for your car. You can try to split here and say, oh, I'll do this. I'll just put a little gas in and have a little lunch. Yeah, you can do that, but at the end of the day, you won't be completely satisfied. In most cases, you choose one or the other. Okay, Very simple example, but that gets the idea. And again, this is done because you have a limited resource of $20 and an unlimited want of wanting both these items. Okay. Another example is the issue of time, which many of us can relate to. Okay. There are only 24 hours in the day. Um, that's obviously pretty standard. The question is, is what are you going to do with it? Um, that is totally up to you, and there are many different things you can do. Um, we could sit here and list dozens and dozens of different things. Let me give you two options that most of you can relate to at some level. Number one is sleep. Yeah. Many, many people love sleep, and teenagers love sleep more than most people. Um, and that's a wonderful thing to do. Or you can study. Okay, It is difficult, if not impossible, for mere mortals to do both of these things at the same time. So you must choose how will you spend your time. Will you take a nice long nap? Or will you study review for the exams and tests that you have for different classes? Okay. So the question is, well, how do we decide how to use our limited resources, whether it's money, time, or something else? Okay. We make these choices based on a concept in economics that we call utility. And utility is simply how much, as it says here, satisfaction or usefulness or happiness, joy, okay, how much do you like what you get from that good or service? So for example, okay, in the morning, a cup of hot coffee sounds wonderful. Most people start with a cup of coffee, get their day started. I can't imagine not having a cup of coffee in the morning. But on a hot July afternoon, a cold glass of water will probably satisfy you much more than a hot cup of coffee would. So utility can change over time, and it can be different for different people. But at some level, we all think about how much benefit we're going to receive from the choices we made. And that benefit is really another word for utility. Okay. Moving on. We also make choices based on incentives. Inse incentives are just simply positive results, or in our, at least in our own mind, positive results that we will get from the choices we make. Now, those positive incentives can come in many different forms. Uh, the government can pass rules that will give us incentives to do certain things. Okay? Um, society gives us incentives to do certain things. And the best example I can think of for you is thinking about getting a high school diploma. Okay, There are definitely certain incentives for getting a diploma. Number one being having more options, going to college, um, potentially getting different kinds of jobs that maybe you couldn't without it, 
um, a certain level of status that comes with that. Okay. On the other hand, you could just not get the high school diploma and just go to work. And obviously the incentive there is that you would get a certain amount of money. Okay. The question is, is which one of these has more incentive to you right now? Obviously most of you, it's getting a high school diploma because you know that's going to benefit you in the long term. One of the last key components that you need to understand about economics at this point is called opportunity cost. It's a very simple concept, yet it's one that many students struggle with. Okay. What opportunity cost refers to is simply the idea that when you make a choice about a good or service that you're going to use, you must give something up. And whatever you give up, whether that's time or money or something else that you are not going to do, that is the opportunity cost. It is what you choose not to do. Okay. Um, so, in a very simple example here for you, we have a student here, okay, who's studying for a final late at night, okay, cramming, if you will. Some of you can relate to this on a very personal level, okay. You obviously take the test, and obviously you're pretty sleepy the next day. Your opportunity cost is that you gave up a good night's sleep in order to study for the exam, potentially because maybe some of you procrastinated. Um, that is a simple example of opportunity cost. But even you sitting here listening to this video, watching these slides, are giving something up. You could be out riding your bike. You could be out having dinner with friends. You could be watching a movie. Um, you, you could be taking a nap. Okay? Most of the things you cannot do and watch this video um, and understand these concepts. So every time you make a choice, you give something up. Okay? And in economics, to re reinforce that, we have a very simple uh, idea. And that is that there's no such thing as a free lunch, okay? And obviously the cartoon, the, the cartoon above, above here, is a little tongue in cheek, where the man has to pay ten dollars yet he gets a free lunch. So obviously it's not free because he's paying ten dollars. But in a little, to clarify a little bit, if I were to invite you to lunch, okay, and I said, hey, I'll pay for lunch because I'm inviting you, um, would that in fact be free? Well, the lunch would not cost you anything in terms of money, but you would in fact have to give up your time. If you come and have lunch with me, you're not going to be able to have lunch with, say, your friends um, or go home and take that nap that you, that you want so badly. So you always give something up when you make a choice. Um, and that is a basic economic concept. So again, just to sort of kind of review quickly, economics is really the study of scarcity, um, which is really the idea that there are unlimited wants and limited resources. Okay, and we, and because there are unlimited wants for goods and services, and yet limited resources to make those goods and services, we have to make choices. And we make choices based on utility or the satisfaction we get, along with positive reinforcements known as incentives. Okay. And when we make a choice, we have to accept an opportunity cost. And we do all this every single day, all the time. And these are some of the basic concepts that economics is founded on. Um, We'll continue to add to this in the coming days. Um, again, please review this a few times if necessary to make sure you understand these concepts. Um, and please come to class prepared with any questions you have. Thank you very much. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.